Hey guys, this is Rob. Do you ever have a project where you need to show some enlarged views to show better detail? Or if you want to show some enlarged typical plans of dwelling units like studios and one bedroom apartments, well then you need to watch this video. Let's get right into it. So here we are in our Revit electrical tutorial project and I'm on the second floor power plan. Now I've decided that instead of showing individual receptacles and lights and motors and heaters in every single um, apartment unit, which is common in multifamily dwellings, we will just enlarge one of these rooms of each type and show the loads within it only once. Because as we learned earlier, this special load center equipment connection includes all of the connected loads that we need for our load summaries in our panels, in our meter centers. So we don't need to show every one of these loads in here and we don't need to circuit every single one of these loads because they're circuited by square footage and, and residential means. So what I typically do is create an enlarged view because this view right now is an eighth inch for my overall. I want to create a quarter inch scale enlarged view of this studio. Now, the way that Revit is set up for this is under view, up top, the view tab, there's a thing called a call out. Like an, you've seen, we've done this before where we just circle an area and, and put a tag on it to show that it's an enlarged view somewhere else, like a detail. So we have a call out. And you can do it with a simple rectangle, or you can have a sketch if your outline is not rectangular. So in this case, this room is a square, at least a rectangle. So we can use the rectangle. I'm going to do the, um, the sketch, though, just to show how that's done. So on the sketch, it puts you in sketch or edit mode because of the checkboxes here. And I can use the line tool or... I can jump back to the rectangle, which I had before, or other shapes. I can even use picking existing lines if I already have an outline that I want to use. But I'm going to use the line tool and show it if I had a, an odd shaped room. So we can do pretty much anywhere just outside this room. We can always change this boundary later. So I'm just going to do that and just catch just outside this room and then get as close as I can to my first line. And as I zoom in, I can see I don't quite hit it. I get close. Now, I can't finish this if these do not exactly intersect without crossing, without, like, you can see my, here's my error. The crop area sketch can either be empty or include one closed, not, not self-intersecting loop. So there's very specific rules on this. So what we can do is just say continue. We will edit this, pull this back. If I can get the grip, pull it back. Now we should be good. Now we have it. And it does a nice sketch for us. So there we go. We have our boundary and this can be edited. If you click this and go edit crop, you can move these around. You can bring them in. You can do whatever you need to, to edit this crop. So that is the call out. And then if you click on the actual callout itself, you're clicking on a view. We can down here pick the view template for this. What we do here is we already have it in here in a, a units electrical plan. That means apartment units. We have a separate view template for units because we are going to be messing around with some work sets to turn things on and off. So I'm going to pick my units quarter inch and I'll show you what's special about that. Also, when I have this boundary selected, I can move the detail bubble to where I'd like. I'm going to say I want it there. I could resize it here without getting into edit mode. So there. Now this view is over here in my project browser. Same name is just called callout one. Now what I would like to do is edit this name. And I use numbers in front of plan names or view names so that I can sort them. So I'm going to use the 20s. So 21, I'm going to call this 
Unit Studio. Electrical. Because this will eventually have lighting and power on it, not just power. I like to put both on my enlarged plans. So I double click that. Now we see that we have our studio plan. And because this is going to be a typical plan, not just an isolated area, I'm going to remove the grid lines from this view. So in my view template, let me go over to my annotation. And these are actually, just to prove it, these are actually my grid lines and architectural grid lines and bubbles behind there. So I need to remove both. So we need to remove our own grids. Hit G for grids. And I need to remove them from the Revit link. Go to my Revit link. And right now it's the view display settings are set up by my host view, my model. I need to make that custom. And you have to do this in a couple places. Custom. And now I want to go down, hit G, to grids, and they are turned off. So we shouldn't see any grids. There we go. And also, I don't need this section view. I'm just going to hide it in this view. So now I have a nice, clean studio plan. I'm not even going to tag this because I don't need the room name and room, I mean the room number to show up because this is going to be a typical plan. And then also I turn off annotation crop and crop region. So this is the basis of my of my uh, enlarged unit plan. So now let's get into how will I show devices. Well, if I just start putting devices in, for example, let's throw some receptacles in. If I show a receptacle, let's say in the main entry here, near my panel, near my load center panel, if I go back to my second floor power, it shows up. I don't want this to show up in my overall view here. I just want it to show up in my unit plan. Well, the way I deal with that is to create a separate work set just for equipment and receptacles. What I do is I just create a separate work set for items that are inside this apartment, any apartment unit. So I will go up to my Collaborate tab, Work Sets, and let's create a new work set. And we're going to call it, I always put an E in front of it, E Units. Visible in all views? No, it's only going to be visible in my enlarged unit view. So the default will be not visible. And then we will have to enable it. I, yeah, we can make it the active work set. I'm going to be working on that for a bit. But now I need to turn unit work set on in this unit view because if I was to move this now from work set one into units, I can't see it. So let's get the unit view template set up. Now, you might wonder, why not do all of this in our project template for electrical? Well, we can't set up work sets in a template. And I know that some firms will use a an actual um, Revit model as a template because then you can put in dummy links. You can work share it. You can set it up so that you can have work sets. We have not done that in our firm. We may do it someday, but for now, that's why we can't do this in our template. So let's do it here. We need to go to work sets and here's our units. And let's make this visible show in this view, in this view, by using this view template. So now I can continue placing. Now that I'm in E units work set, anything I create will be in, in the work set unit. So now I can start placing um, objects following my NEC rules, which is a whole, you know, it's a design issue there, not just a drafting issue, modeling issue, and put my receptacles where they need to go. Um, a lot of times just for that, I will use detail lines to see dimensions. That's about three feet. It means I can go roughly another three feet. So I need to put one down there. And example, and I'll go 12 feet from here and continue my receptacles. I'll put in all of my 
uh, kitchen receptacles, appliances, uh, fans, all of that in here in my unit's work set. So that as you can see, they do not show up here. So that is how we go about showing an enlarged plan. And then when I drag this onto a sheet, I have a whole sheet of enlarged typical units. Now you can also do this, of course, with any other area which you would like to enlarge. Typically, if I go down to my first floor power, a lot of times I like to enlarge the electrical room. So I will just do the same thing. And let's say this time, when I go to my view call out, I want to sketch this because it has an odd shape. So I would start sketching with lines around this electrical room up through there and it jogs right there and those connect so I can do that. Now this here was too tight of a, of a radius to get my curve. So if I pull it out, it doesn't want to do it. There it is. So as long as I keep this pulled out enough, I get curved. It's not critical, just an appearance thing. So now this one, I don't want this to be my a unit type view template. I want this to, to be a regular power plan. And so now what do I get over here? I get a new view called first floor power call out. And this one I may start as a 30 series and just call this enlarged electrical room. And if it had a number, it does 133. We can also make this surrounding line a little wider. And the way you would do that is go up to your manage tab over on the left next to materials is object styles. This is where you can get into your line weights of the various lines in the project. Now, the lines for this are called callout lines, and they're an annotative annotation object. So let's go to annotation and go out down to the C's, and you will see callout heads and callout boundary. So these are both set to the minimum one. We want to make these stand out. So I would suggest going to something like four for both. And you can see how that works. They're a little wider. I'm going to go a little higher on those. Object styles, annotative objects, call out boundary. Let's get that up to about eight. Okay. And that's too much. But you can play around with those to get those the way you want and help those pop out of your plan. I've set it up for quarter inch. And this one, I'm, I want to turn off other bubbles, but leave my bubbles on for the grid because I, I want to show this. This is an actual area within my building that I want to be identified by grid bubbles. But I may turn these off and just do more visibility issues like that. But that gives me my enlarged electrical plan where it's much easier to show tags. A lot of times I don't put leaders on some of these. But now I can tag this and I have lots of room to show other details. If I want to show clearance lines, if I want to show, you know, receptacles and other notes and stuff in here, I have a nice enlarged view. But anyway, that's the basics of how you would create an enlarged view of anything that you uh, want to see more detail in or, or isolate objects in. So. If uh, you found this helpful, hit that like, and uh, until next time.